let's start with our strepsorines, our first major primate group. Here, let's go back to our tree. On one half, we have our strepsorines. On the other, we have our haplorines. Our strepsorines, these are our lemurs, lorises, and galagos. Um, all of these guys, you can find them in Africa and Asia. They are primarily nocturnal, and most of these guys are solitary. There are a few exceptions with our lemurs in Madagascar, um, as you might remember from the movie that came out a couple years back. Um, our strepsorines here, they have a couple really interesting features. First, they have something called a tooth comb. So their incisors and their canines on their lower lip, are, they're all kind of smashed together. And instead of pointing up like they do in us, they point out um, and it really forms a comb. And uh, they use this to groom each other. Um, these guys, they have that post orbital bar. So they have a fully enclosed orbit, but you can see there is a hole towards the back. And they also have a grooming claw. So while they have nails on almost all of their fingers, there is one, their second finger, which still has a grooming claw. And most of these guys are nocturnal. They also have an interesting feature called a rhinarium. So their nose is actually connected to their mouth, and this just enhances their sense of smell. Um, and this is similar to most other mammals. Here you can see a dog's nose way up close, and you can see how that lemur there, it has a similar type of nose. Another thing we see in our strepsorines is something called a tapetum lucidum also called eye shine. Um, so there is a reflective layer in the back of the eye which causes this eye shine at night. And this is a feature of nocturnal animals. This reflects light back into the eye so all of the receptors in your eye have a second chance to see that light. So you'll have a slightly less um, accurate picture but you are more likely to be able to um, see light in low light conditions. We can see here, um, comparing a human eye to a cat eye, the cat has a tapetum lucidum there in green. So there's that extra reflected layer. So light is reflected back and our eye has um, a second chance to be able to detect it. Um, again, here's our primate tree. We have our strepsorines and haplorines. Now let's take a closer look at our lemurs. Um, here, we're now talking about our lemuroidea. These guys live in Madagascar. Um, and this is kind of fun because we actually have a few diurnal forms, even though most are nocturnal. Um, we have a couple different size ranges here, some that are very small and some that are medium size. Um, some are solitary, but we do actually see some large social groups here and a variety of diets. Um, our lemurs, they had an adaptive radiation on the island of Madagascar, so that's why we see a little bit more variation in them than we do with any of our other strepsorines. There are several different lemurs that we can talk about. We have hopolemur, lemur, fanner, microcebus, avahi, and lepolemur. Um, and here are some others that are larger, Propithecus, Injury, Varicia, and Dobintonia. Um, so you can find them in different places throughout the island. On this page, we have slightly larger body ones. Um, and if you want to dig down, we actually have some subfossil lemurs. Subfossil just means they are very recently extinct. So up until 500 years ago, so they haven't actually completely fossilized. Um, and what's interesting about these guys is they are very large. So all of our megalodapus here, um, is much larger than any other strepsorine you can find today. Um, and why did they go extinct? Might have been our fault. Next, let's look at our lorises. So going back to our tree here, now we're focusing on this group. Lorises are much more widespread than our lemurs. You can find them all throughout um, Africa and Asia. Um, and within the Lorisoidea, we have two groups within that. So let's look at our Lorisidae or our Lorises first. These guys are nocturnal, relatively small, and solitary. These guys have a very specialized way to hunt. They are slow stalkers. So they move very slowly and deliberately. They stalk their insects and then they strike. Um, so lorises are unique in that they usually move slowly, even though they do have the ability to move fast when they need to. Um, we do see a couple different diets from them, um, insects, flowers, fruits, and exudates or sap. And let's look at some of the different genera we find in this group. We have 
Artisibus, Loris, Peridicticus, and then my personal favorite, Nyctisibus, and the Slow Loris. Um, this is an image from my master's project here. So you can see we have, um, we're looking at a couple different of the faces of different species within Nyctisibus. There's a little bit of range and variation of their coloration. And we're showing that we have this Nyctisibus uh, Kukang that we actually think is a Nyctisibus bengalensis. So we were identifying that one of our individuals was incorrectly attributed to a species here. And showing they're um, distinct from our Nyctisibus pygmaeus. You might have already seen these guys in social media already. Here are some images from the Tickling a Slow Loris and a Slow Loris Eats a Rice Ball that was popular ooh, a while ago at this point. Um, unfortunately, there is a darker side to this story. So these videos became popular and went viral because people thought they were oh so cute. And yeah, they are really cute. But first, this Slow Loris being tickled He's not enjoying it. He's terrified. And the fact that these went viral, this fueled the Nyctisibus pet trade. Nyctisibus are um, special because they are actually poisonous. They have a gland on their elbow that secretes a toxin. They lick it, so that gets into their mouth. So if they bite you, that's not pretty. So one of the things they do in the Nyctisibus pet trade is they actually clip the canines of these guys so they can't um, give you an infected bite. And unfortunately, many different, many of our slow lorises actually die from infection from this procedure. And we're also removing them from their natural habitat, fueled by this viral, um, going viral on social media. It has um, greatly impacted their conservation status and they are now critically endangered. So please go to ticklingistorture.org and sign the pledge to save those slow loris. But let's not forget, let's talk about the other half here, our Galagos or our Galagidae. Um, the common names are Galagos or bush babies. These guys are nocturnal. They are strong leapers. Um, most of these guys are solitary, and we do see a couple different diets here of fruit, exudates, and insects. Here are some of our different genera here, otolemur, galago, paragalago, galagoides, and euodicus. Let's talk a little bit more about euodicus. Um, traditionally, we weren't quite sure how this genera was related to the others. So here are a couple different um, phylogenies that people had reconstructed, and you can see Euodicus is in a very different place each time. Um, here's some research done by one of my friends, um, and he showed that Euodicus um, goes here, and it's actually basal to our Galagos, or it's the um, one that's closest to the root of our tree for our Galagos. Um, and he also noticed that something that had been previously named as Galagoides was actually split and was two distinct groups. So my, um, my friend Luca, he got to name himself a genus. That's one of the most exciting things you can do in evolutionary biology. So he spit, uh, split Galagoides into the Western clade over here and the Eastern clade, which he renamed as Paragalago. Another um, fun thing to note is that our Galagos, they look very similar to our gremlins with their large kind of bat-like ears and those big eyes to see in the night. So what traits do strepsorines have and what are the different groups within strepsorines? Mm -hmm.